Hey, I'm Kyle. Welcome to this episode of the Newfoundland Hobbyist. The Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored in part by Robinson's General Store in Middle Arm, Noble's Timber Mart with locations in Springdale and Bay Vert, Knife and Axe found at youngandmackenzie.ca, Outdoor Pros located in Mount Pearl, Newfoundland. So today we're going to talk about one of my favorite hobbies and uh, it's definitely a unique one. It's one you don't hear about or see a lot and because of that it's really rewarding to get into it. It offers so many possibilities both for yourself and as a possible little side income. It's just a lot of fun and not real expensive to get into. I'll talk about everything we need and how to get started with leather working. Now what I love about leather working is that there's so many things you can make from it and you don't even think about it. Things like leather wallets here that pretty much everyone carries, you can make for yourself, which you have never had the ability to do before. Uh, a sheath for your axe. I can't tell you how many people contact me because they need sheaths or cases, as some people call it, for their axe. This nice leather strike collar, and you have the ability to make it to whatever extravagance you want. If you have that old draw knife that you have no way to carry it around, because how do you cover up an inch like that? Problem solved. You have that old chisel or chisel set. Maybe you want to lace up some nice grips for your motorcycle. That's kind of a kind of a thing. Maybe you want to stitch a seat for your motorcycle if you're feeling real uh, if you're feeling real crafty. But the point is, is that there are so many different things you can do with leather work. Just opens up a lot of possibilities and a lot of opportunity. Like I said earlier, for uh, for side income if you're interested in that. Now believe it or not, everything I use for my leather working is right here in this tool tote. And this is way more than you need. This is a, a substantial amount of stuff and it offers a lot of options, but you don't need near this many options to get started. So let's look at some of the basics you will need and, uh, and how I've adapted my kit over time. So obviously the most basic thing is you'll actually need some leather. This is just a piece of hide I got from Tandy Leather. That's a place that I use for my leather within Canada. The best leather I found, and there are a lot of different options, a lot of different types and thicknesses. The important thing is the thickness. Leather is measured by ounces. So the thickness is gauged by ounces. So this right here, this is the best stuff I've used yet. And it's six to seven ounce leather. I think anywhere from like six to eight ounces or so. Anything beyond like eight ounces and up, uh, in my opinion, is getting a little bit too thick for average projects. If you're doing something real fine, like uh, say wallets, you'll want something thinner than the six and seven ounce. This six and seven ounce I found most perfect for any of the stuff I do. Knife sheaths, axe sheaths, uh, different tool sheaths, any knife pouches or anything like that. This stuff is top notch. absolutely love working with it. Now leather comes generally in an unfinished or a vegged tan state. So it's just a really raw hide that's just been uh, gone through a tannery. So it's got kind of this off a little bit lighter than a caramel color. It's very beautiful, but generally you want to dye it. And uh, we'll get into dyes later. But this is a basic slate. Now, my first leather working projects were various scraps of leather. I went uh, a long time leather working before I actually bought hide like this. Because as with everything for me, I was cheap and didn't want to actually spend the money to, to buy a hide. A hide like this will cost you around 70, 70, 70 bucks or so, but you can get a lot, you can see the size of this hide, you can get a lot 
of projects out of this and you've got some real nice stuff so you'll know you'll have a nice finished project but this is what you'll start with so now there are a couple general steps when it comes to making things out of leather uh, the most general is you need hide and then you need to cut out your shape whatever you're making then you need some way to attach hide to hide so that can be done with various hardware uh, glue and or stitching lots of times they use a combination of all of it but that's the general idea after that a bit of dye and uh, and it's just that simple so in the case of this axe sheath right here this is just a two-piece construction so uh, the front here is one piece of leather and then the back is just another flat piece of leather so I cut those two pieces out and then like I said I just needed to join them so first I glued in a welt there now there are lots of different types of glue I've used contact cement gorilla glue I really like actual leather working or craft cement so this is stuff here by Aline's okay I really like the Phoebe's leather working glue as well um, it dries really quick it's not messy it dries clear it's almost like a, it looks like a general purpose like craft like a, a white paper glue that you would have used in school but I really like a good glue and I always use it as a starter for sticking everything together uh, these glues generally aren't strong enough to actually hold the project together you'll need to use some type of stitching or hardware after that to to actually have your project stay together so in this case here we have our sheath and then I glued it together so I glued front piece to back and then I could work on how I was going to enforce that joint I could have just used a bunch of pins okay and right here is an example of a sheath where I just use rivets right here that's all that's holding this together I glued it first just to help me set the rivets but once the rivets are in there now this is a very strong joint back to our first one I decided to do rivets at the high stress points right at the corners here but then I did stitching okay which is pretty simple we'll talk about it in a minute but you can see we just included a snap in there and then we have this beautiful beautiful sheath which will last for a very long time if we take care of it so it was a lot of fun to do it's also a very very practical uh, craft project and certainly one that people tend to pay for and just look how nice that looks and with very few materials I mean you can see with that great big piece of hide I just showed you how little this was to actually take of that you could probably make 20 of these or more with that one piece of hide and really how much money are you looking at then per hide so now let's look at some of the other materials we've talked about the actual type of leather you'll need then we'll need some glue then what now I'd say after the leather and the glue the next most common thing you're gonna to want to buy or have is some stitching thread and a needle now there are so many different types of stitching thread and sizes uh, you can pick whatever you want. I generally use a smaller thread, but as you can see, I have a bunch of different colors here brown, black, red, white. It's the only colors I've ever needed. But generally, you start off with a nice off white or brown, and it'll cover most projects. So, in general, you want whatever thread you use to be waxed, and that's what gives you a lot of traction in the joint. So, when you pull that stitch tight, it stays nice and tight within the leather so all this thread is wax it's got a very sticky well a waxy coating to it and then you'll run two needles one at the end at one at each end of your thread and then you'll run a sta saddle stitch now there are di lots of different types of stitching the most general the most common tends to be a saddle stitch but uh, it's very simple so in terms of thread and needles you can pick it whatever size and color you want it's not real important just affects the, the look of your project now we're going to talk about dyes this is something that you're going to want that natural veg tan leather doesn't have a lot of resistance to any elements and uh, it gets dirty really easily so you're going to want some dye 
I really like the Feebings brand here. It's what I've always used. It, it works great, never had any issues, and it gives a nice resilience just with the dye alone, without any uh, coating. It hardens up the surface of the leather, makes it uh, a little firm and takes some shape. So I just, I really like dyes. You can get all kinds of different colors, reds, greens, real bright colors. Um, I generally tend to stick towards the browns, occasionally I'll use black, but lots of different colors. You can really have fun with it and customize your projects in that way. So the last critical thing you're going to want is hardware. Now again, this is a lot of stuff I've just built up over time and necessity. You do not need anything close to this to start. So I've just bought these cheap organizer kits that I put all my packets of stuff in when I get it just to help me not make a mess. But we have all sorts of stuff in here. So hardware lets you do some different things. So for example, right here, they have a snap closure. Snap closures are nice, so you can just buy little snap kits. Just general purpose ones uh, will work, but uh, it's definitely nice to get the heavier duty leather working ones. And then rivets. I like double capped rivets, we'll look at those in a second. And you can see I also used eyelets here. So all of these got used on this project. So that's most of what you're seeing here is just all different colored rivets. I have antique brass ones, I have black chrome ones, silver, brass, different sizes, but it's just generally everything is repeated. Like you saw on the project a minute ago, we also have snap kits. So again, I have all different colors here, right from antique brass to shiny brass to uh, silver or nickel finish, like here. And these kits are very easy to set up. You can just order a kit that comes with the little setter and everything with them. Most of these kits, at least when you're starting out, you're best off buying a kit which will come with the tools needed to set them. Once you have that kit, then you have the tools for next time. You don't need to buy the kit. You can just buy the pieces. So that's about it for the basics of tooling and materials you'll need. You can see we've gone into very few things by now and, uh, and certainly not a money of investment. Those, those pieces of hardware are super cheap, a couple cents a piece. Uh, really cheap stuff to get into and easy to find. Shop around lots of different sites. Amazon is a great place to get hardware. Uh, you have to play around. You might not always get the best quality stuff, but for most projects it's generally pretty good. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're actually going to do a little project with our list of stuff here. So we're just going to take our bare bones list of materials, uh, cut something out, and uh, I'm going to show you how simple it can be to make something really useful and really fun as well. The Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored in part by Robinson's General Store in Middle Arm, Noble's Timber Mart with locations in Springdale and Bay Vert, Knife and Axe found at youngandmackenzie.ca, Outdoor Pros located in Mount Pearl, Newfoundland. So a couple years ago I bought this little grant hatchet at Canadian Tire. It's a beautiful little hatchet. I actually really like them, they make a nice little axe. But, like most hardware store axes, it only came with a little rubber edge cover. And if you're in the woods snowshoeing around and things with a backpack like me, or even heading off on the skidoo, you'll know that that's not much good to you. You can't throw it in a backpack like that. It's dangerous and it'll cut everything to pieces. And if you throw it in the box on the back of the skidoo or under the seat, you can do that, but of course, if you've sharpened up your edge nice and done a good job, you don't want that getting all beat to pieces and then you arrive at a little campsite and have a little fire and your axe is all chipped and gone. So we'll decide how deep we want the sheath to sit. And once we do that, I'll just sketch a little shape here for the shape of the axe. Now, we want the axe to be bigger or we want the sheath to be bigger than our axe so we have room for what's called a welt or a little leather spacer. So I'll just sketch out something like that. So anytime you have a fold like that you want to make sure not to cut that off. You just fold it over and trace the other half. So it's very simple. Now we have a mirror image that I can cut out. Now for a sharp edge tool sheath, 
you're going to want what's called a welt in there. That's important. Uh, and that is a layer of leather between the two outside layers. And that is a protective. So your edge goes into the sheath. And without that, your edge can cut out through your stitching or get beat into those rivets. If you have a welt, then your edge sits into that leather and it's just kind of cutting into that soft surface. So you definitely want one of those. So now you can see we have our piece of leather stuck in there. We'll trim off that bit of excess there. And now we have what's called our welt, our middle piece. So, th so that's looking great there now. The next thing we want to do, because we're about ready to glue this thing up already, just with that little bit of work. But you're going to want to dye the inside of this before you do that. Otherwise, you won't get to later. I made that mistake so many times. I'm going to use a black dye for this. I think black will look, uh, look good with that black head. So just our Phoebings dye, you just want to dip in, wipe off some of the excess, and then you just very simply just rub it into the leather. I won't go right to my edge there, just because I had to put glue there, and I don't want any moisture affecting the glue. But that's good enough for now, just so you don't see that white inside the sheath. And it's all pretty simple here. Just a little bit of this Phoebe's leather glue. You can see it's nice and nice and white there. We'll just stick it in place. And it grabs pretty quickly. It's not a super strong hold, but it does grab quickly. You got a little bit of maneuverability, but and then a little bit on the other side. A little bit of leather and now we can fold her over and stick it in place and now we really have what looks like a sheath I'll just press this into place here for a minute or two and uh, and that's all it'll take if you want you can throw a clamp or two on it for for 10 15 minutes but it doesn't take much so now we have a little sheath here what I like to do now is since we roughly glued this up and the edges are a little bit mismatched and rough I will trim off just the smallest amount just to make those edges very perfectly clean so I'll tidily trim off just a couple mils so you can see there now we have a very nice smooth edge so I'll do the same thing on the back side and the leading edge up here so now that we have our little pocket, the next thing is to determine how we want to hold this together. Remember, that glue is not that strong, so it won't hold up to, uh, to any use with, with forcing your sheath in there. So we need stitching or hardware. I think on this sheath, for the purpose of showing you guys the different, the different stuff, I think we'll do both. So what I'll do first is I'll use this little stitching groover. Now these are super cheap. You can be had on Amazon. I'll add it to the list at the end. But this allows you to get an even line all the way around. And it gives a groove to set your stitching down into. So your stitching is not sitting up on the surface. It's sitting down in a little groove. Now you can get all kinds of little tools to, like an over stitching wheel for example, to accurately measure out your stitching. I, for most of my leather working, have just measured them out manually. So I'll just mark out with a little pen and a ruler uh, because it's, it's difficult to be perfectly accurate with this. You're working with a material that's soft and malleable, so it's going to move a little bit anyway. So it's not like you're working within thousands. You're working within generally millimeters. So what I'll do is usually four to five millimeters. I'll put a stitch hole. So I'm just using a pen and a ruler here, and I'll do every five mils for this one. If you want to see how that works or how that looks, this is one here. You see, you got a little tooth wheel, so you can just start in the notch here, and then you just run your overstitch wheel along like that and it gives you those indentations so it happens really quick you just 
roll it along and you have your perforated line. So very easy, we marked out our stitching. You can see it's not perfect, but it's pretty accurate. Now before we drill those holes for stitching, we want to see where we're going to put our hardware. This edge here where the axe forces down into tends to be a pretty high stress joint. So I'm going to put a pin here. I'm going to put a pin in this corner as well and probably this top corner. Why not? Three, uh, three little rivets and then we can drill out our stitching holes. So this is one type of punch. You can get little manual punches too. You hit with the hammer. I've used these so far. I like them. They work. They're inexpensive but just got different size punches and you just push it through the leather just like that. Nothing to get too technical about here. You probably want to do your edges again after just because we might give them a little sanding after if they're not clean enough but see the the dye soaks in really quickly into the leather so what you're going to do is take your two needles and just thread each one at each end just tie a little single knot so you can see we have our thread through that first hole now how we run the saddle stitch is we'll run through the next hole to it with one of the needles. Now with the piece of thread still in the first hole so you can see we've looped around we've put one through the second hole here with this piece of thread we're going to go back through the second hole with the other piece of thread. So let's pull these even here now. So this is our first stitch and you can see we've just come out and went back through each of the holes. So let's see that again. So this one, this thread over here, will go through the third hole now. Just like that. Let's pull it out of the way. And then this one on this side will go back through the same hole. Sometimes you need a little bit, a little pair of pliers to help you pull that knot through there. Now you can draw it tight. So now we have two stitches in right there. So I just cut out this little flat leather band and dyed it black. I cut around on each end. Very simple. But I'm just going to put the strap around the head and we're going to use a rivet and a snap to do that. So I'll use our punch here and I'll just punch a hole roughly center like that and now what I'll do is take something so I'll just put this on our axe roughly where it would go here and I will push a little dot and now you see we have a dot on our sheath here now these punches have a nice long arm on them so I can get right in there so perfect now we'll take a rivet to get inside there poking out through just like that now I usually do this with my axe in there so I'll put my axe in the sheath as that steel backing put our strap on over line it up where we want it then we just put our cap on so I'll just put the cap on just like that few clicks with the hammer and that is in place just like that we'll wrap it around the back and come up to where we want it see if I can line it up with the other side and now we're gonna put in a snap so I'll just mark roughly where I want the snap to be sit it right in there with our And with that, and with that, we have a finished sheath. 
so there it is again if you want to have a look at it you see we have very few tools very little materials gone into this so this was a cheap project but what a nice gift even just to ask to borrow someone's axe and uh, bring it home give it a little sharpen and make them a nice sheath like this return it back to them in this condition man what a nice little gift to do for someone so there it is the basics to leatherworking everything to get you started and I think I threw in a few little extras there just to help you progress along the way so if you have no idea what to ask for for Christmas this year or it's after Christmas and you got a few cards with some money in it you're wondering how to spend it consider taking up leatherworking for uh, for hundred say 150 bucks you can have yourself all set up to make something just like this and tons of other awesome projects as well kind of your imagination and skill level is the limit I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsors of the show you guys really help make this show possible I want to thank you the audience the reason we're making this show to start with that's it for this one Merry Christmas to you and yours we'll see you next time